Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Lynn Larson. I'm Director of Student Recruitment in the College of Engineering here at UT Arlington. This is part of our Thursday Brown Bag Ask an Ambassador series. We've been having fabulous conversations with um, our ambassadors and with receiving questions from students. So happy that you are with us today. Um, I would like to introduce my um, student ambassador. Ishrat, if you'd like to give us, you know, obviously your name. Uh, what are you studying? How long have you been at UTA? Why you're studying what you're studying and what you intend to do after graduation? I can start. OK, Lynn. all right. Why don't you start? Thanks, Zara. <laughs> <laughs> OK, um, hello, everybody. My name is Zara. Uh, I'm currently a senior. Uh, I will be graduating May 2021. My major is architectural engineering. And yes, I can't wait to graduate. <laughs> <laughs> and what are you going to do after graduation? Well, hopefully I would I would have landed a job by then okay. <laughs> in like a construction firm as a project engineer, but let's see how that goes. <laughs> okay, I totally understand that. Totally understand that. Um, Ishrat, are you with us again? Yes, were you guys not able to hear me? Yeah, not able to hear you. Oh, I swear I had my mic off. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, my name is Ishrat. I'm currently a uh, biomedical engineer. Ishra, you're, you're breaking out again. Can you speak up a little bit? Still can't hear you. Oh, technology. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, um, today we'll just move forward. Um, today we're talking about um, how to establish relationships with professors. Um, this is a really important aspect of being a student because professors can really help guide you through your studies. You might be able to work on a project with them. You want them to recognize you in class. And so I have some questions to start off with and then um, Anyone in attendance who might have an additional question, um, go ahead and put that in the chat box and um, we'll be able to look at it um, at some point it, to answer those questions for you. So Zara, how long have you been on campus? Well, I've been on campus since January 2017, so it's been more than three years, almost four years. Wow. wow. <laughs> it went by quickly, didn't it? <laughs> when you yeah. look back at it. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's pretty amazing. So um, since since you're an old hand at this, how do you initially approach a professor? Honestly, first when I came to UTA, I, 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 I was a pretty shy person and most engineers are, to be honest, they're pretty intro introverted and don't like, you know, starting up a conversation. Um, so I'd sit in a class with, a, especially my f first two years in freshman and sophomore years, you usually mm -hmm. have bigger groups, you know, a lot of students in the same class because everybody has to take that course. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd find it, I'd find my professors pretty intimidating and I was also shy, so I wouldn't really ask questions even if I had one. I'd just go back home and later, you know, type an email and be like, by the way, <laughs> I have this question about today's class. So I was pretty the shy kind and I would never approach my professors after class. I'd see a bunch of students making up a line after class to talk to the professors. I wouldn't. But then um, like getting to know my surroundings more and when I was more comfortable, uh, especially my uh, junior year when I started my engineering courses, I didn't really have a choice. Like I mm -hmm. had to go and ask my professors those questions. So um, even though it was it, like the first move, the first time I did want to try it, it was hard, but I just had to do it because I had the midterm coming up. So and honestly, trust me, when I went up to him, he was like so nice about it. Like it was like there was a burden on my chest, like, oh my God, I have to go and talk to him after that. <laughs> but no, it was, 
he was pretty easy and he was really nice to talk to. And honestly, most professors at UTA actually want you to come up to them and talk to them, you know, ask questions. They really appreciate it. Like the reason why they are, they, they have office hours is that they want their students to come up to them, talk to them. And to be honest, they do enjoy those conversations with their students. You know, you kind of make like a good relationship with them. And it is really important, especially if you if you like me in the future when you're a senior you want a job and, and your employer wants a like recommendation letters so you mm -hmm. go up to your professors and you can always ask them say, hey professor especially the ones that you have your senior project with that could you please write me a recommendation letter and they're always so helpful plus they have a large network you know with other with other engineering companies and mm -hmm. people in other engineering company so it is kind of nice to have a good relationship with your professors because it will help you in the future for sure especially yeah. when you're trying to find a job yeah or if you want to go to grad school even you know you mentioned like the connections that professors have i mean there are all of these professional organizations and research conferences and things where our professors meet other professors and they might be talking to a professor from a different school that has the exact program you want to study for your master's or phd and they can make those connections for you right so it's okay. not only finding a job but it might be to further educate for further education at the same time, which I think is like fabulous. Mm -hmm. Ishrat, are you, are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? I put on like my actual wired headphones and everything. Yeah, maybe get the microphone a little bit closer to your mouth. Okay, can you hear me now? It's better. Okay. Um, yeah, like Zara was saying, you know, having a good relationship with faculty is definitely important in terms of jobs. And, um, you know, if you want a letter of recommendation, because as far as um, engineering professors go, a lot of them have industry experience mm -hmm. or they're very well connected with other uh, faculty. And so. I think we lost you again. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, that's better. Thank you. Okay. Um, so I can this. Um, but yeah, um, professors are super, super helpful and um, they can help you open a lot of doors that otherwise wouldn't be an option. Mm -hmm. So um, Ishra, let's start with you since, since you're um, on mic. Uh, what kind of questions do you ask a professor? Um, a lot of the times when I would go to their office hours, I I would just be like, hey, you know, this material that you discussed today, I'm kind of lost on it and just talk to them about like the research and uh, not the research, but like what we're doing in class and stuff. And then just, you know, start the relationship from there, because with professors, you don't really want to waste their time and you want to um, get as much out of their time as you can. And so for me, I would try to establish a relationship by, you know, like, OK, you know, this is what we're doing in class this is what I'm having difficulty with and mm -hmm. then go from there. Great. What about you, Zara? What kind of questions do you ask a professor now that you found your willingness and the bravery to go and do that? <laughs> so like Ishrat said, um, like Ishrat said, uh, first, obviously, I'd start off like if I if I, if I was so desperate to find out the answer to a question, I'd go up to him. And that's how I, I started. I, I usually start out with my professors. I go to their office hours. I ask them questions related to mostly the coursework or mm -hmm. any pro upcoming projects. But um, eventually, after like maybe I'd say two or three of these meetings, we're at a place where I'm comfortable with the professor and he's also, I think, comfortable with me talking <laughs> to him. So, um, yeah, and then we kind of like you know sometimes the conversation if he has time he'd usually initiate the conversation so what are your plans after graduation mm -hmm. and then i share my plans with him and i kind of ask him for adv for his advice because obviously he's a professional he's been in the field way longer than i haven't even started in the field so <laughs> <laughs> so um i kind of just ask him for any advice that he'd give to his students or to anyone who's interested in becoming an architectural engineer or project engineer in construction. Mm -hmm. and so anything related to my career, just ask for his advice and kind of slowly and gradually build up our relationship like that. That sounds great. So um, we all know that um, 
student personalities can be very strong personalities or maybe not quite as strong and in your face. I can't think of any other way of putting it. So um, how self-aware do you need to be when talking with a professor um, of their time constraints so that you're not monopolizing the conversation if there are other students were waiting to speak to the professor or making sure that um, the professor doesn't feel boxed in by your presence or you're not letting go of something, right? There's a fine line there, correct? And Zara, if you'd like to start, that would be great. Of course, I think anyone would kind of get the hint if the professor is like in a hurry or like he doesn't have a lot of time to, you know, talk to you about like extra stuff outside of the coursework. Mm -hmm. He would he would let you know for sure. He'd be like, OK, I'm running late. At, like usually with me, the professors would be like, OK, I'm kind of running late. I have to be here for this meeting or I have to be elsewhere. I have to leave mm -hmm. campus. So it is understandable. Plus, you always get the hint. They kind of like kind of rush up towards the end and you're like, OK, this um, my professor really needs to leave right now. Yeah. So you kind of. <laughs> So you kind of like then back off and you're like, OK, um, professor, I'll talk to you some other time when you probably have more time. Yeah, or during office hours or something mm -hmm. like that. Ishrat, yeah. what about you? How 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 do you, how are you self aware that a professor's time is limited? So yes, uh, similar to what's like their body language and kind of like, you know, the way they're acting. And mm -hmm. also I ask them like before if it's outside of office hours, I say, hey, do you maybe have like five minutes to go over this? Sometimes they'll say yes, sometimes they'll say no. You know, it just mm -hmm. goes with the and so try to be a little bit direct and ask them, hey, do you have time for this? That's awesome. So on the counterpoint, um, and Ishrat, I'll let you start first. Um, how do you handle it if your professor seems standoffish? I mean, what do you do? I mean, I think Sarah brought up the point that a lot of engineers are really introverts and very shy. So what if you kind of sense that from your own professor? Yeah, so um, that that can get a little bit tricky. Um, I've had a couple of professors, and so I would just go to their office hours, and even if they were standoffish, I, I made the effort because those office hours are dedicated to the students, and those are times that the professor sets aside for it to help their students and stuff. And so if I'm there and they're standoffish, then, you know, that's more so a little bit on them because I'm making the effort to engage mm -hmm. them, get um, extra help in the class. But um, yeah, like one good thing about engineering, it's like try to find common ground, find something that they're interested in and kind of get them to warm up because as introverts, we have difficulty opening up. And so, <laughs> thing in common with your professor even if it's the class or even if it's something outside of class even if mm -hmm. it's something it's a talking point that can you know open up a bigger window for conversation yeah that that's important so Zara I know you kind of talked about this first so Ishrat I'll leave it to you um, to sort of expand on this because we we've talked about this several times and I think we all go through this if I'm a really shy person and not really sure um, how to get past this shyness or like putting yourself out there. What skill did you find to be able to get over the shyness or this hesitancy in talking to a professor? Um, for me, it was just the need for a better grade. Like, <laughs> uh, At least you're honest. <laughs> yeah, during those office hours, like, you know, it's difficult asking like the question, like when in class, everybody seems to have understood the concept the professor was discussing and understood it and then you're like oh what did you uh, can can you go back and so for me that's what kind of primarily motivated me a lot of the times just because you know i can be shy and i can go through the class not understand and then just with my luck it'll probably appear on the test and you know and then i'll be <laughs> kicking myself for not asking and so <laughs> it's just sometimes like you know you have to understand like yeah you have a shy personality but also like you sometimes I have to take charge and if you want to do well in these classes, if you want to understand some of the rigorous concepts, you have to kind of overcome that fear and um, basically go forth, I guess. Right. No, I, I understand that for sure. Zara, what about you? 
I definitely agree with Ashrad. The need for a better grade is my primary, like my primary motivation to go and talk to talk to the professor, even though if I, if I'm shy or anything. Mm -hmm. Plus, also, like I mentioned before, I know that if I have a good relationship with the professor, honestly, they're not that. It's not that bad talking to them. I actually enjoy my conversations with them, um, especially when some of the engineering professors they kind of nerd out about a certain topic. It gives me more <laughs> knowledge and more information, and I, I find it really interesting. So um, yes, definitely, um, my grade that's what matters mm -hmm. to me, and that is why I have to overcome my shyness to go and talk to him. And secondly, uh, also the fact that I mentioned before that I need. Rec if I ever need recommendation letters in mm -hmm. the future, which I do, like I'm applying for jobs now, um, I always have those five, six professors that I've had good relationship with and they can, you know, kind of vouch for me and be like, yeah, she is, yeah, we'll, we'll do it for you. We'll, find, we'll write a good re recommendation letter for you. That's awesome. So um, there's been a lot of um, articles in the papers about how men and women are not necessarily created equally in the workplace, in the school, all kinds of different um, avenues, right? And so as a female student, do you feel you have to be more assertive to get time with a professor or to make sure that you're getting what you need from a class or a professor? So Zara, you want to think about that and See if you can I, put together I an, answer. an answer. I have an answer. <laughs> um, honestly, not at all. Um, being a female, I kind of feel like I have the upper hand because there's not many females in the engineering mm. department. And professors, uh, they, well, I shouldn't be saying this, but like the professors, they want there to be more females in the engineering department. And they kind of, um, they're like proud of, you know, I feel like they're proud of the female students who are proud mm. of the engineering department and the College of Engineering. And I don't feel like I need to like be more assertive or like kind of like have to do something to stand out because already in a class of, let's say, 22 people, I'm probably one of the three female students mm. over there. And so, so I'm you already stand out anyway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And the professors they they find it they kind of they're like proud and they usually ask me, "Wow, so you're thinking of going into, you know, like, like the construction field as a project engineer. Not many female do that and that's uh, mm. I'm I'm glad to hear that." <laughs> so, yes, not assertive at all. You already stand out in a class of 22 or mm -hmm. 30 people. So, you know, you were saying, you know, a female project engineer, um, my apartment building is having construction done and they built a scaffolding on my patio and the construction manager and the, cons the head of the project are both female. And I met them both today and it just made me feel so good. It was like, yes, this is yeah, awesome. Yeah, I know, so right? Good. It feels yeah. good. Like ha having, like seeing other females around in the engineering field, it, it feels nice. Like you kind of get the confidence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. And Ishra, what about you? Do you find that you need to be more assertive as a female student? No, uh, not really. I've been, while you guys are discussing, I've been trying to think of moments and no, the uh, professors are usually pretty responsive. Uh, to both male and female. Um, sometimes, like uh, one of the classes I've had, and it was, um, what was it? It was like digital design or something. And we were discussing something and it, the topics of like video games came up. And so like one of the guys was said, oh, well, I should be better at this than the girls because I play a lot of video games. And the um, <laughs> professor said, no, not really. My daughter plays a lot of video games too. And so. That's you know, awesome. <laughs> I think they're very, very responsive to both. And um, sometimes being a girl does help you stick out in engineering because you might be one of like three. Yeah. And so the professor is like, oh, hey. So, yeah. Yeah. So so back to that question, Ishrat, I know that in your uh, bachelor degree, you did electrical engineering. Um, how many female students were normally in your class? Ooh, not that many. Um, maximum, I would say four, four or five. OK, yep. And it, uh, and Go ahead. With biomedical, it's a lot more. I think electrical is a very, it's very male dominated, but it's getting better. We actually at UT Arlington, our head of the electrical engineering department is actually a female. She mm -hmm. just came forward, I believe this summer. 
And yeah. so she has some exciting plans for um, how to increase our female enrollment. Yeah, that's super exciting for sure. Um, so what if what if your professor, especially since we're in this virtual world right now, doesn't have office hours and asks for students to make appointments with him? Um, have you run into that situation at all, Ishrat? I have. Uh, to be honest, I feel like the professors are way more responsive with COVID than prior. Like they answer emails back right away. They make, you know, like the other day, my internet um, actually um, gave out during the middle of an exam. And my once my internet, my exam was submitted and my professor was super nice. He replied back to my email within like five minutes of me emailing him in panic and he opened the test. And um, yeah, he was just like, I have Microsoft Teams hours from here. We can discuss it further. And so I think the professors are doing a great job in terms of um, being accessible to the students. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, a lot of them don't have like office hours on Microsoft, but they're very responsive to making appointments with you and make like one of my professors, like they knew that I was, I had work and other things going on. They're like, okay, well, you know, if you're available at 8.30 Thursday night, we can talk. And I'm like, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, that, that was great. <laughs> Outside yeah. of normal okay. office hours. That's actually pretty cool, right? Yeah. Yeah. So they're definitely more responsive and they're more open and um, they're willing to, you know, work with you as much as they can. That's great. Zara, have you run into that situation at all? Yeah, um, there have been times when after class I'd go up to the professor and they'd be like, uh, I'm sorry, I'm running late for another meeting or I have somewhere else to be. Could we maybe do, do this during our office hours? And so, yeah, there have been a couple of times that has happened, but it hasn't still, it still hasn't mm -hmm. stopped me from meeting them. Uh, I still um, go, usually office hours is like the best time to make an appointment with them and just talk to them about it. Um, but other than that, they are really nice. They, mm -hmm. it's only been very rare that they would tell me that they're getting late for something or they have to be somewhere else. Mm -hmm. But other than that, not really. Like they're really nice about it. And they always make sure that they make up for it. They always ask you for your name and um, your student ID. And they kind of, they would usually send me an email afterwards and be like, you know, just remind me, send me an email to set up an appointment. I'm sorry, I, I, I'm not mm -hmm. able to meet you right now or talk to you right now. So they're really nice about it. Nice. So, um, sorry, I'm going to start with you. And this just popped into my head. Given this virtual world, what does an office hour look like? Is it just you and the professor alone or is it more than one student in the office in the office um, at the same time? I mean, what does that actually look like to have an office hour with a pro with a professor? So um, being virtual, not many students set up appointments with the professor. Um, I have set up maybe like two appointments with two mm -hmm. of my professors and um, usually during the virtual office hours uh, me, it would just be me and the professor because mm -hmm. he'd already give it, he's already given specific appointment you know timings for Got every it. person but okay. if there is no appointment usually there's no appointment afterwards and it's only just me and him so he doesn't mind like prolonging the meeting time or talking to me for longer. Okay, that's awesome. What about you, Ishrat? I can't hear you. Okay, so let me ask another question then, and Zara, until we get Ishrat back, which I know we will. Um, how do you, how do you address your professor? Do you call them doctor or something? Is it first name basis? I mean, what's the protocol of addressing a professor? Uh, uh, honestly, most engineering professors, like the fac engineering faculty, they're usually they usually have their PhD, so they're already a doctor. Or um, so I would. I honestly, whenever I'm writing emails or whenever I, I want to like call them, I just say, "Excuse me, professor." So I just call them professor. <laughs> to avoid any sort of confusions. But like if it's an assistant professor, I'd um, probably call them by their, by Mr. and their last name or Miss and their last name. Okay, that's that's helpful. Um, Ishrat, what about you? If yeah, you're back on. Yeah, I apologize about that. Um, that's okay. The internet is very sketchy. Yeah, I, if they're a PhD, I call them doctor. Um, I see the work my friends who are PhDs that they put in and so they definitely 
earned that title. So I call them doctor. And if they're like, let's say like uh, some of our PAs are master's student, I just call them Mr. or Miss, you mm-hmm. know, whatever they prefer. And sometimes the uh, TAs are pretty cool. They're like, oh yeah, you can call me like my by my first name. So Okay. So that's really helpful. You know, when I was um, a student way, way, way back when, I was always a little intimidated by professors. You know, I think I was one of those students who really didn't know what to talk to a professor about during their office hours or what kind of questions to bring up or how to develop that relationship. Um, so you've kind of talked about thing subjects to discuss in the office hours, but maybe you can elaborate a little bit more, like give me an example of how you determine what to discuss during an office hour with a professor. I mean, you just don't go in there and say, hey, I missed your lecture today. What did you talk about, right? It has to be something a little bit more than that. And Ishrat, let's start with you. Yeah, um, so like I said, like a lot of the times when I was having confusion, or difficulty with the material. Oh, excuse me. Um, I, that's why I would go talk to them about, be like, hey, you know, I just practiced from we did in class. You know, you went through it a little bit quickly and everybody seemed to understand, but I got stuck on this step. Can you explain it further? Hmm. And so okay. just go from there and use that as a starting point. That sounds fabulous. Zara? Um, I'd usually not say I missed, I wouldn't start off by saying I missed your lecture. Because <laughs> then it would kind of like put like a, you know, like a bad impression. Right. But unless it was, it was actually an emergency and I had to miss his class. Mm-hmm. With him. But I'd usually start off, I, before I go in to meet him, I'd go up, like he, they usually upload their uh, slides online. Mm-hmm. So I'd look at the lecture slides and see what they talked about, kind of like skim through it and then go to him and ask him, so professor, you talked about this specific topic on class, let's say Thursday. Um, I was wondering if you could kind of like give me summary of the most important points or like there was an equation here that you talked about. Could you explain this equation to me? Kind of like start off with small, Mm -hmm. tiny questions and build up. And then build up to it. Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) that's probably a good idea, right? So we kind of touched on this, but I want to go back to that is um, you're sitting in class. It's a class you really enjoy. It's with a professor that you're really um, enjoying the way that they lecture, the things that they're lecturing about, and they start talking about their research. And all of a sudden this light bulb goes off and you're like so excited to hear more about the research. How do you go and talk to the professor about a research or a research project or a project in general? Um, and let them know that, hey, I'm really interested. I want to be able to do that. So Zara, do you want to start? I mean, how do you approach something like that? Because it, it could be a big ask, right? Um, honestly, so UTA is an Arvin Carnegie research, and which means that there is a, and there's like a lot of funding for our for any research going on over here, especially in the College of Engineering. Um, uh, my when I didn't have any internships. I thought maybe it was a good, it would be a good start for me if I kind of went into research because at least I'd have something to show on my resume related to civil engineering or architectural engineering. So um, when I, one of my coworkers actually, I, I wasn't an ambassador then, he he was already a part of the re, part of research and he said, why don't you just email your professor? I was like, wait, what? <laughs> like, why don't you just email your professor and ask them if they have any research opportunities and I was like that's actually not a bad idea you know and I'm so what I did was I emailed my one of my professors that I knew in the civil engineering department he was and I was lucky because she was actually working on a couple projects back then and she wanted student workers on it so I was like um and I was also lucky because it was also paid so it was kind of like a plus plus for me I have something to put on my resume and gain like more um, experience with research and I also was getting paid for it. So all you have to do is pretty much email your professor, even if you don't want to go and talk to them in person. But if you do talk to them in person, obviously it would make a better, uh, like a better image of you if you haven't Mm -hmm. talked to them before. Uh, But since I already had a good relationship with my professor, she kind of already knew me. She just asked me to send my uh, my resume to her, email it to her, 
And she'd go through it and get back to me. And like the next week she got back to me and she was like, okay, so I have a position for you. So she didn't even have to interview me. Most professors, they don't even interview for you for the position because they already know you and have, you kind of have a good relationship with mm -hmm. them. I was like, wow, that's, that's amazing. So I started doing research with her afterwards. So what kind of research did you do? So it was a third rail insulator project. Um, it was, I am an architectural engineering student, but it was related to more towards the civil side, like the transportation, uh, transportation engineering. And um, I was kind of glad because um, once I graduate, architectural engineering is still a new field and not many employees know about it. So I was glad that I'd kind of get that experience in a civil engineering department, you know, concentrated on that. So professor employees, like till this day, when I talk to them, they're like, okay, so what did, tell me about your research. They find it that really appealing because not many students out there get the chance to do research. And then I explained to them about my transportation engineering. We had to, um, we had to, we had to basically our research was about how to reduce the wait time for passengers who use public transport. So like uh, the rail special, I mean, not in Texas because we don't have a lot of public transport here, but like maybe uh, on the east uh, east coast, like New York, Chicago, all of all of these big cities with huge public transportation, um, like a lot of public transportation opportunities mm -hmm. for their uh, people. So basically contact them and ask them how like how often their uh, passengers have to wait in trains or in subways and how we could basically we were working towards a solution on how to reduce the wait time for passengers. Mm -hmm. So it was a very interesting and kind of a new experience to me, especially since I don't know anything about transportation. <laughs> I, didn't knew, I didn't know back then, but then I knew later. That's so, awesome. So yes, you do gain more knowledge and more experience in fields that might be not related to your major and employees in the future kind of like look at that and they're like, okay, so you could also work in a transportation engineering mm -hmm. field since you have that experience. Yeah, no, it's it's the breadth of experience, I think, which is really exciting with research. So Ishrat, what, what can you tell us about, you know, approaching a professor and asking about research and then asking for a position? And if you've had that opportunity, what kind of research did you do? Yeah. The first research, research opportunity I ever did was kind of like that. So um, it was back, I was taking like a biology class because I'm pre-med and um, this professor did um, research on Daphnia and their plasticity. And I was really, really interested in it. And so I went to his faculty profile and it has like a list of You cut out again. Oh, um, I went to the professor's um, profile and I read through their publications that they've had and I, I like got like a feeling for the research that they did and then I emailed them I'm like hey my name is so and so I'm really interested in the research that you do um, I was wondering if you would have some time to talk and so um, they met with me and then you know I told them I'm like hey you know these are the points of your research I'm interested in and I'd be you know I'd really like to have an opportunity to you know, learn from you in the lab, in your lab. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, the professor was like, yeah, we definitely um, need more people. And so he let me um, start in his lab. And the first thing I ever did was to wash a bunch of um, beakers from like nine to five. All <laughs> to Hopefully you five. had gloves on. <laughs> yeah. And so, but that led to other opportunities. And so sometimes, you know, um, you just need something something or someone to open the door and even right. though it might seem minimal like it might just be a professor's way of seeing oh well does she, is she gonna tough it out mm -hmm. and you know and so yeah yeah so um what what do you do if the professor denies your request to assist with research i mean do you just not ever try again or do you try something else um, Ishrat, you want to start with that? Yeah, I mean, no, like getting denials, it's just a part of life. And I mean, the professor maybe had like a legit reason. And so, you know, ask them, well, you know, maybe next semester would you have an opening? Mm -hmm. Or if not, then go seek another professor. As uh, Zara mentioned, we are a um, very high research oriented school. And so there are opportunities 
He's everywhere. Mm-hmm. And even though the research might not fall in line with what you like, you might it might help lead to, you know, something that you do like in the future. But for to get like started off, it's kind of like an entry level job. You mm-hmm. kind of have to like the grunt work and like do things that you don't like in order to get to a place you do like. Yeah. I think that's true with everything. Zara, do you have any comments on that? Um, I agree with what Ashra said. Obviously, don't give up. Um, um, it is a, like being dismissed is kind of like part of life. And so do not give up. There are so many other professors out there. Just apply for another research mm-hmm. position if you find it on Snapchats. Or um, like Ashra mentioned, Ask that professor, just show him how determined you are and be like, so uh, next semester, is there going to be an opening for it? Mm-hmm. And then make sure that you act on it. You know, as soon as the semester starts, email him. And I'm telling you, the professor will remember. He'll be like, <laughs> OK, you know what? This person is actually interested because they asked me last semester. And they're, I feel like they're going to do a good job since they're so enthusiastic about it. So show him your willingness. Right, to be able to do that. Mm-hmm. So. Um, we all know we're living in this very virtual world. Um, very few person to fer- person, face to face contact with professors and students and everything else. So how do you build a relationship with faculty when you're in like an asynchronous class? Zara, do you want to start with that? Um, Is honestly, there a trick? <laughs> <laughs> like, Whenever you go through the recordings and um, like see like when you go through the recordings for the day that they're published and um, once you're done with those, just make sure just write down all the questions that you have. It's kind of really frustrating at times because I don't get a chance to talk to the professor right at that moment. And then later I forget about it and I'm like, OK, that's like I really don't like this because I can't ask the professor why he put this number here and put mm-hmm. that number there. So um, just make sure that you uh, write it down in your notebook, that specific part in the recording, note down the time, like maybe if it was at 41 minutes and 36 seconds, just so later you could refer to it when you're talking to your professor and they would have a better idea of what you talking about or what you're asking them. Mm-hmm. That's really helpful. Um, Ishra, do you have any comments on that in an asynchronous world? Yeah, um, so like Zara said, I recommend um, doing what she does. And also, like a lot of my professors have been posting like research articles that a part of our curriculum to keep up with the latest. And so I'll read through it. And like if I have any comments or anything, I say, hey, you know, professor, like could they have done it this way? Could they have? And so just, you know, try to keep up a repertoire with them like, hey, you know, I really am making the effort in the class, even though you don't see me coming and sitting in front of you. Like, and so, but yeah, I agree. It is very, very difficult. And um, I've talked with a couple of my friends. It's difficult, but it's not impossible, right? Right, right. And it's just like, you just have to go the extra mile, you know, mm-hmm. act, do as much as you can to show that you are making an effort. And um, if you have lab, any like face to fit like because UTA does like the hybrid model so if you do get any face time with them try to make a good as good a print a good as impression as you can right I think that's really important so um I've got a couple more um professor type questions and then I want to kind of switch gears okay so you're in a class you'd like this professor you've built a relationship um, how do you ask for a letter of recommendation? Ishrat, can you tackle that question for me first? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I I usually try to wait until the end of the semester and see what my grade comes out to be. <laughs> and then I approach them from there. Uh, but sometimes, like, you know, if I need a letter for, like, a scholarship or something, I say, hey, you know, Professor, I really enjoy your class. I feel like I've been doing well in your class. Um, would you feel comfortable? Like that's mm-hmm. the keyword. I ask them, would you feel comfortable writing me a good letter of recommendation? Mm-hmm. I don't ask for just a letter of recommendation, a good letter of recommendation. Mm-hmm. And then we go from there. Because I've had friends who've asked professors for letters of recommendation and they like did not, they didn't do a good job in writing that letter. Like. Mm-hmm. 
And so, you know, you have to be very good with your wording and ask, you know, are, would you feel comfortable doing this for me? Like, do you think you, and so, you know, just go a little bit from there because professors get requests for letters of recommendation all the time. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you just need to ask in a polite way and um, see what they say. The worst thing they can say is no. Yeah, so it also sounds like when you're asking for a letter of recommendation, you want to ask for something very specific, right? For yeah, a scholarship, yeah. for a job placement, for graduate school, right. because all of those letters of recommendation are going to include different aspects of how they know you. Would you agree mm -hmm. with that? Yes, ma'am. All right. Zara, how would you like to comment? Um, so like Ishrat said, would you be comfortable is really the keyword because mm -hmm. obviously you wouldn't want to make them feel like awkward you know and be like okay like you don't even know the professor that well and you just one day show up and be like would you write a recommendation letter for mm -hmm. me <laughs> and you wouldn't want them to say okay i don't know you that well or maybe you haven't you know, we haven't met a lot here in my office hours. Mm -hmm. I don't know you that well. So obviously you wouldn't want that response. So make sure on your end you have tried building a good relationship with them. Mm -hmm. And once you feel like you're at a place where you will, will where they would be comfortable with you to uh, with you and would kind of like give you a good recommendation mm -hmm. letter, then just kind kindly ask them like, um, hey, but, hey, professor, would you mind if like even if you don't need it right now, just like for future reference, if you ever need it, be like, so in the future, if I ever need a good letter of recommendation for my job or for like an, a research position or for my grad school, would you be willing to uh, mm -hmm. write me one and then see how he's like? So yeah, kind of give him a heads up beforehand, maybe. <laughs> yeah. So let me ask a follow up question. Professors work with so many students. Um, is it common for them to ask the student for the highlights of what you would like to see included in that letter of recommendation, right? It's like I've, I've had this experience in the lab. I've taken this class. This is kind of my goal, you know, that kind of thing so that they can incorporate those highlights in the letter, even if they know you, but just to make sure that what you need for the letter for the position or the grad school is included. Is that common? Um, actually, you know what, um, that's now that you've mentioned it, it's actually not a bad idea. I've done this a couple of times just to make sure that like they would usually their follow up question would be, OK, so what is this rec recommendation better for? What mm -hmm. is this maybe this job or this internship you're applying for? So I could write down your experiences like mm -hmm. that, that. Yes, you have you have experience in this or something related to it, you know, mm -hmm. not just kind of a general recommendation right. letter. Obviously, it needs to be specific, so um, it is not a bad idea to kind of like once they say yes, I wouldn't mind, then kind of give them a bit more information about mm -hmm. it. So, so this is this position I, I came across and I really enjoy doing this, so I thought mm -hmm. I'd be a good fit for the job. And uh, my my like your my past experiences related to this job, maybe talk about them, give them a small mm -hmm. summary about it so they'd have a better idea of what to write down. Great. Ishrat, what do you what do you feel about letters of recommendation and giving the professors hints? Uh, yeah, I usually give them my CV and my resume mm. and then um, I if the job or scholarship or which whatever I'm applying for has like key points they want address. I put that in like a word document and say, hey, you know, uh, per my application, these are the things mentioned. So if you wouldn't mind. Um, hitting on these points mm -hmm. and then, uh, you know, going from there. I try to be as straightforward with them as I can because professors are busy and I try not to like, you know, take up too much of their time right. because they're already doing me a favor by writing this letter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, th I think that's really helpful. Um, so I want to switch gears just slightly. Um, how do you interact with a GTA or GRA? Is it any different than with a professor? I mean, what does that professional relationship look like? Ishrat, if you could get us started on that. Yeah, with like the GTAs and um, that we have that, um, you know, I've had uh, interactions with. They're very, very helpful. They're super professional. They're super nice. And um, they're a little more laid back than professors, but some of them can be stricter than professors. It's just their personality. You got to kind of ga like gauge what, I guess, type of personality they have. Uh -huh. But yeah. 
they're very they're super helpful. They have office hours as well, and sometimes they're a lot. They know that you're a student, and they know the struggle, so they sympathize with your struggle. And right. so it's sometimes it's a little bit nicer than the professors, and will actually give you a little bit more leeway. Right. Okay, that's that's important to know for sure. Um, so Zara, what do you have to say about that? Uh, I'm sorry, I kind of lost. What was the question? <laughs> Um, how is your relationship with GTAs and GRAs and how oh. is it the same or different than with a professor? Uh, yes, like I should said, they are laid back compared to professors. They're actually more friendly and you feel like they would relate to you more than the professor. Uh -huh. So I would always, whenever I'd go to the professor and if there would be instances I wouldn't understand something, like because usually professors use, you know, like a difficult terminology that I'm not really used to and I don't want to kind of interrupt them again and again and kind of bug them. So I would go to the um, to the TAs afterwards and and would ask them the same question. And to my surprise, sometimes they would be much more helpful because their usage of words would be much more simple and they'd be able to relate to me more. So it's they're really friendly. And I if I was intimidated, intimidated by a professor, mm -hmm. I definitely go to the, to the TA and have a good relationship with them. That's great. Um, and then a general question. Does it make a difference to sit up front in, cl in the classroom, Zara? Definitely does. Yes, I've seen that. Um, if you're at the back or even in the middle, um, professors would recognize you, of course, but not as much as the not as much when you're up front in the class, like mm -hmm. in the first row or maybe the second or the third row, like the professors would be much more interactive with you, you know, and they'd ask you questions in class. They'd pick on you. It's also a nice way to make sure that you're up and you're not sleeping. So people yeah. at the back, <laughs> usually, they tend to sleep and the professors kind of like they obviously don't forget them, but they don't pick on them as much as the people in the front row. Hmm. OK, um, Ishrat, what are your what's your feeling about sitting up front in a classroom? Yeah, um, I'm definitely one of the ones who sit up front. Uh, it helps me pay attention. It also helps the professor see my face and kind of like know my name when I answer questions and things like that. OK, and um, also I think it. It just it gives you more like I was saying, like it gives you more um, Oh, what's the word? It gives you more access to the professor, I guess. I don't know, because you're the first thing they're going to see when they're like lecturing. And that really does make a difference when you're in like a class of like 75 people. Right. So it it you you become noticed, right? Rather than yeah, sitting in, yeah, in like sure. the the way back. I'm sure that though these days it's it's harder to do that in the virtual world, but um, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, for sure. Yeah, so in the virtual world, do you guys have your videos on when you're in class? Um, I personally do not because it, it eats up extra bandwidth with the okay. streaming. Yeah, um, sometimes they do require it. So for participation, so I'll just put my video on at the beginning. I'll ask my TM like, hey, can you verify my participation so I can and so and then go from there. Um, but yeah, a lot of the times it's just we have the videos off and so it's hard for a professor to see your face. Yep, I think that's the hardest part about this virtual world is not seeing faces all the time. Zara, mm -hmm. what about you? Do you keep your video on when you're in these lectures? Uh, I'd say it is kind of difficult because I don't always have it on. Yeah. I try to keep it on sometimes, but honestly, like if you're if you're not like if you don't have the proper ad time <laughs> to, <laughs> to turn on your video and it's like you're just being lazy and you don't turn it on. Most students don't and I feel like it's kind of difficult for the professor to, you know, like they do sometimes feel like they're talking to a wall, especially yeah. if nobody's like attentive in class or like, you know, giving answers back or ask, asking questions. So it is definitely difficult, but like everyone, I also do not have my video on most of the times. So. Yeah. Yeah, no, I've been in a lot of meetings where nobody has their videos on and you just see the little squares or the circles or things like that. So um, kind of a last question. Um, what happens if you and the professor say, quote, get off on the wrong foot? You know, there's a misunderstanding or miscommunication or you're just not on the same plane. How, how do you fix that? 
you know i remember being a student and i had this one professor that i was terrified of and i just knew that we were on the wrong foot and everything i tried didn't seem to work until after the midterm exam when i aced it and then we could finally kind of relax and build that relationship but what do you do if you get off on the wrong foot zara would you like to start with that please sure um if you well, you do not want to be on your professor's bad side. Let's just keep it that. <laughs> Let's just say that. So definitely, if you think like you've done something wrong and like you don't, or even if you haven't done something wrong, you're you're you just feel like you're not on your professor's mm -hmm. good list. Then definitely, you know, meet them during their office hours. Talk to them. Ask them more questions. Kind of start building that relationship towards the good side. And if you've done something that a pro that that was probably not right or they probably did mind it maybe mm -hmm. talk about it kind of touch that topic and be like hey professor this one time in class i did this um i i don't think you really appreciated it so i was just i just wanted to apologize for it mm. maybe and if you okay. so definitely try to be on their good list and not on their bad side because obviously you do need a good you need an a grade by the end of the day by the end yeah. of the semester <laughs> that's what we're all striving for right exactly <laughs> Israt, what about you? What happens if you get off on the wrong foot with a professor or a GRA uh, or GTA? Yeah, if it, it's something on your end that you did wrong, I would definitely apologize, 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 because these people are in charge of your grade, and it does it does make a difference at the end of the semester if you're at an 89.2, you know, to get bumped mm -hmm. to that A, mm -hmm. that perception can make a difference. But, like, you know, if it's something that just, some awkward moment that happened that caused it just address it like during office hours or in like another professional manner and just say hey you know this is what happened i apologize this is where i was coming from and just you know kind of like roll with it and try to get through it because mm -hmm. like having your professor like you it can make all the difference in the world yeah it sure can so um in the last couple of minutes that we have ishrat i'll start with you any sage advice as a graduate student who's been on the UTA campus for a few years? Um, any advice you could give to students in building that relationship with professors? Yeah, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, professors are regular people, just like you and me. They put their pants on one leg at a time. <laughs> so, um, you know, uh, just, just be normal and just they like talking with students. They really do or else they wouldn't be a professor. Mm -hmm. and just be respectful of their time and you know if you want to do research with them just approach them and say hey this is what i want and sometimes just be straightforward with what you want and uh, see what it gets you that but sounds always great. be respectful yeah yeah zara words of wisdom uh -huh. i'd say be yourself be professional um make sure that you're that you're always asking questions in class don't be shy uh everybody is in the beginning but obviously try and overcome it because it is it is going to be beneficial for you at the end of the day like uh -huh. the professor he doesn't really need the recommendation letter or he doesn't really need and like another student network on there uh -huh. you're the one who needs it most so obviously you should strive for it yeah and kind of stand out that's awesome that's great so um last bit of information is this contact information that we have um there's my email and my phone number. Um, if you have any questions about um, this episode of Ask an Ambassador, or if there's something else you want to know about the College of Engineering, please reach out to me. Um, obviously, we're virtual, so um, I am accessible. Um, also, if you want more information as to how our student ambassadors um, navigate um, talking to professors or what is it like when you get into the upper level courses of being an engineering student, please send them an email at the email address you see, b.an.engineer.uta.edu. All of our engineering ambassadors are current engineering students in a multitude of fields of study with engineering and um, they're more than happy to talk to you about anything that uh, you might have a question about. Uh, the ambassadors also hold office hours Monday through Friday from 9 to 5, um, except for a couple of times when they're not available because we're either doing these brown bag lunches or we're doing our weekly meeting. 
Um, but do reach out to them if you would like to have a conversation. We can also arrange individual Zoom conversations if you would like to do that. Um, we are here for you, the students in the College of Engineering at UTA, and uh, we want to do everything we can to help you uh, be successful in your engineering career. So um, as a last thing, I just want to um, thank you all for uh, showing up today. Um, and um, really happy that um, you came to join us today. We hope that you learned something. Um, join us again next week um, for the continuing conversations with Ask an Ambassador. Um, I find these to be really interesting. I find out more and more about our ambassadors every time um, we have these conversations. But um, very much thank you and uh, we wish you a wonderful week. Is it close to midterm time, Zara? Yes. Yes, okay. Well, good luck on your midterms. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and uh, just have a lovely day and um, a wonderful weekend coming up. So um, thank you all. We appreciate your being here and um, thanks again for coming. Thank you.